Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Simon, the art teacher from Cartwright School. I'm here today to teach you how to take a piece of art that you already have and make it digital so that you can submit it to your art teacher during distance learning. Alright? Alright. So let me grab my trusty recording headset and let's go. In the instructional portion of the video, we're going to be discussing preparing a work for capture, setting up your space, taking the photo, tweaking the photo, and submitting it to your teacher. Links to each section are in the description. Part 1. Preparing a work for capture. In order to prepare your work for capture, you need to take a couple of precautionary steps. Firstly, make sure that any wet media like glue or paint is dry. Trying to work with wet paint can lead to a bad day. Second, have it on some sort of backing. A backing is any flat, hard object that the work can rest on. You can use things like cardboard, books, or if you're really in a pinch, a good friend who you trust can lend a hand. One thing I do not recommend doing is holding it yourself while you take the shot. Part 2. Setting up your space. The key elements here are a mounting spot, your camera, and lighting. When you choose your mounting spot, find a place that allows you to rest your artwork so that it is directly facing the camera as much as possible. An easel is ideal, but failing that, you can prop it up against a wall or on a couch. What you don't want to do is lay it flat, especially when your lights are above you, because then you're going to have a big, distracting shadow. Just look at that thing. Just look at it. Once you've chosen your mounting spot, it's time to bring some lights into the situation. The ideal lighting setup is white light at 45 degrees on either side of the work. If you don't have the tools to do that, one light source at 45 degrees on one side will work. If your light is too intense, you can soften it by using a lampshade or having someone hold a piece of paper in front of the light. If you're using a phone camera, you can also use the built-in flashlight. However, I would only recommend doing this with completely flat pieces as any artwork with any 3D parts will appear flat, defeating the purpose. The reason for this is that when an object has light cast on it, it creates a shadow. When the shadow is from a different angle than you, such as our 45 degrees, you can see the shadow and it looks normal. When you use the flash, however, you don't see a shadow because the shadow and your eyes are on opposite sides of your artwork. Without that shadow, it appears strange to our eyes. Remember, good lighting can make or break a piece. Part 3. Taking your photo. In this part, we are going to be discussing different ways to take photos using some of the different tools you might have at home. Some of the different tools are a cell phone, your school issued Chromebook, or a digital single lens reflex camera, or as it is more commonly known, DSLR, or simply digital camera. Cell phone. No matter whether you have an Android or an iPhone, there is a camera app. You can open it and press the circular capture button to take a picture. Just remember to keep your finger out of the lens. Chromebook. In order to take a picture with the Chromebook, hold the device with two hands with the back of the screen to your chest. One hand is on the side, stabilizing the device, while the other is underneath the Chromebook with one finger wrapped around the front, ready to click. Lean your head forward so that you can comfortably see the screen. If your hair is shoulder length or longer, you may want to put it up in a bun or ponytail. Then, move your whole body as a unit to adjust the angle to take the shot. If possible, a friend can help you get just the right angle. Once you are satisfied with your angle, carefully click the touchpad to take the shot. DSLR. I'm not going to go over how to take a photo with a DSLR here, as the process required to take the shot can vary between models and manufacturers. If there is one in your household, 
then there is likely someone who knows how to use it. I recommend asking for their help. Part 4. Uploading photos to your Chromebook. For Android phone. Plug your phone into your Chromebook via USB cable. Once it's in, unlock your phone. The phone will prompt you to allow or deny a connection to your computer. Tap allow. A new window will open on your computer screen featuring several folders. You may get more than one window depending on whether or not your phone has an additional memory card. The folder your picture is in will be named Camera. Double click on that. This is the folder where your phone saves pictures. Click the little grid icon to go to thumbnail view and scroll down to find your photo. Once you've found it, click and drag the picture into the downloads folder. Your photo will then be saved to the Chromebook. iPhone or iPad. Plug your phone into your Chromebook via USB cable. Once it's in, unlock your phone. The phone will prompt you to allow or deny a connection to the computer. Tap Allow. A new window will open on your computer screen featuring several folders. There's no way for me to predict for you which folder the picture was saved in, so you're going to have to go on a little hunt. If you've found that you've entered the wrong folder, you can click the DCIM up at the top of the window to go back to the main folder selection. Once you've found your photo, click and drag the picture into the downloads on the left. The picture will then be saved to your Chromebook. Part 5. Tweaking your photo. On your Chromebook, open the web browser. Once it's open, go to pixlr.com slash x. Pixlr is a free web-based photo editing app that uses an interface similar to Photoshop. Once you're in Pixlr, click Open Image on the left to open a file browser window and go to your Downloads folder. Double click on your picture to open it. If your image is large, you may be presented with a dialog box asking you to resize your image. Click Ultra HD and then Apply. You may find later that your computer is running very slowly while you are working. You can always close and reopen with the full HD size instead, and that might save some system resources. The first thing you may notice is that your picture is flipped sideways or upside down. To fix this, click the Properties tool in the toolbar on the left. This will open the Properties submenu, giving you some controls to rotate and flip your image. Next, click on the third icon, Crop, which opens the Crop submenu. You will now notice that your photo has been surrounded by a white box. Clicking and dragging the corners of the box allows you to cut away anything from the work you do not desire. When cropping, it is okay to cut away a little bit of the edge of your picture, as long as the subject or the most important part of your artwork is there in its entirety. Once you're happy with your selection, press return or enter on the keyboard to finalize your crop. Next, click the fifth icon for adjust. Here are some controls for adjusting colors and values in your work across the entirety of the work. Play around with the sliders to get a feel for what they do. If you find some settings that you really like that make it look different, then save out the one you like separately. Remember, you are here to enhance the work that is here and make the digital photo match the original as much as possible, not to create a ridiculous yet funny version of your picture. If you don't like something you did, you can always undo it by holding control 
and pressing Z while control is held down, like this. Hold control, press Z, and it undoes it. This activates the undo command and is your most powerful digital art tool. If there's a small part of your picture that's bothering you, you can go to the ninth tool in the toolbox, the retouch tool. It features four tools, heal, clone stamp, blur, and dodge and burn. Heal takes a part of a picture and makes it match the rest of the picture a little bit more closely. For instance, if there is a piece up here that I don't like, I can use the heal tool on it and kind of start massaging it away. The clone stamp tool allows you to take uh, some pixels from one part of your picture and transfer it to another part of the picture. You do that by going to the source button over here, clicking the part that you want to take pixels from, and then painting those pixels elsewhere. Blur and Sharpen uh, do just that. Blur takes your picture and makes it more blurry. Sharpen doesn't necessarily sharpen. Um, it, it kind of does, but not really. It takes your picture uh, and it makes some corners sharper, but I would not, I would actually just not use Sharpen. And then Dodge and Burn lighten and darken your picture respect respectively. Um, there's a lighten and darken mode. You can choose the range and you can paint in a lighter or darker section. For instance, if I wanted to make the bottom part of this whale darker, I would simply use the darken tool and use that to push that back. And I can also use the lighten tool to kind of make like a highlight. When you are finished, click save at the bottom, which will open the save menu. In the file name box, put your first name, last initial, and homeroom teacher's name and project name. In this case, it will be Sean S, because that's my name, Simon, because that's my homeroom teacher, and Baby Whale because that's my artwork. Save it as a JPG with high quality, don't touch anything else, and click download. Now your picture will show up in your downloads folder. You can click show in folder to go right to the new picture. Part six, submitting to Google Classroom. First, point your web browser to Google Classroom. Once you're there, go ahead and click on the banner for your art class. In this case, we're using the classroom for Cartwright School's Art Club. At the top, you will see three category banners, Stream, Classwork, and People. The position of the colored line beneath the category banner shows you which category you are currently looking at. Click on Classwork. From the classwork page, you'll want to click on the appropriate assignment. In this case, there's only one, so I will click on Oil Painting, followed by View Assignment to go to the assignment page. Once you're in the assignment page, you are presented with a few options. If you have a comment or question for your teacher, you can add a public comment that all of your classmates can see in the class comment stream. If you have a note that you only you want your teacher to see, there is a private comments widget on the right. Once you are in the assignment page, you are presented with a few options. If you have a comment or question for your teacher, you can add a public comment that all of your classmates can see in the class comment stream. If you have a note that you only want your teacher to see, there is a private comments widget on the right. To upload the assignment, go to the Your Work widget on the right and click Add or Create. This will bring up a drop-down menu. The third option in will be File.
Click that to bring up an Attach File dialog box. Inside the dialog box are categories. The one you want to click is Upload. From the Upload category, you can click Browse to open a file browser. Then go to Downloads. If the files are too small for you to make them out, you can click the View Thumbnail button on the top right to change to a thumbnail view. From here, click your picture and click Open. Once Open is clicked, you'll need to give the file a moment to upload. Then the Your Work widget will change to reflect the file you have just uploaded. If there is more than one picture of your work to upload, you can repeat the process and upload multiple files. Once you are finished uploading, click Turn In and Turn In again when the pop-up dialog box appears. Wait for the page to reflect the changes made and you will be finished. You will know you're completely done when the button in the Your Work widget changes to say Unsubmit. Once your teacher has graded your assignment, you can go back to the classwork category in the classroom, then go to the assignment page to see your grade. From the assignment page, you can use the private comments to discuss the assignment with your teacher. Or, if there are multiple grades at once that you wish to see, you can click view your work. And that about does it. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you learned a lot. For our friends in kindergarten, since you don't have Chromebooks, you can use an app called Snapseed. It is available for you in the self-service app and you can install it right now. The interface is laid out a little differently, but all the tools are the same. Finally, I wanted to give a big shout out to Mr. Tucker from Palm Lane as well as Ms. Glink. This would not have been possible without. Until next time, toodles.